And we have to keep repeating that because it hasn't had the same kind of scientific and philosophical uh, reverberations as it's thought to have. It's the same, it is the same uh, import as when someone will say to you, or even a physicist will say to you, you know, all of this is light, all of this is made out of energy. And most people, yeah, I can take it, that's, that's okay, and they just go about their business. If you let that sink in, really, it will blow you away that all of this is literally light. That's a very, and not only is that a very far out scientific idea, but it's, it is the core of spiritual, many spiritual traditions. But we have to psychologically let it permeate also through that the African type is the prototype of all variations of the human beings today. Our saga begins in terms of human development about uh, 12 million years ago in the so-called Miocene age, the age of the great apes, with a small little creature called Ramapithecus. She was about th three to four feet high. She lived in the savannas and part of the time in the trees. She was a vegetarian, lived in families, and so on and so forth. Now, she's the common ancestor. She's the common ancestor of both the hominid line, where we, come, we descended from, and also the chimpanzees. So some people say, well, she wasn't a real a progenitor of human beings, okay, and that's based on some biomolecular evidence and so on and so forth, and that's debatable one way or the other, it depends on your philosophical point of view. About six to eight million years ago, the ape chimpanzee and the hominid line diverged. Development went in different directions. About 4.4, four and a half million years ago, roughly around in there, a hominid creature called Australopithecus ramidus, you may have heard about that kind of creature in time, Newsweek, various magazines have studied human origins. This creature appeared and roamed the highlands of uh, north central Ethiopia. She also was a vegetarian and a root gatherer, lived in families in small groups. About four million years ago, roughly, uh, arose the Australopithecines, it's a whole group of, of creatures. Uh, in particular, Australopithecus africana. She stood upright, and that's very important, because before this time we were closer to it walking on all fours. She stood up almost upright, was about four feet tall, the brain case a little larger, and this is very important. All other hominid lines came through her. All other hominid lines came through her. Now later, there was a lush profusion of other different Australopithecine kind of creatures running around. Um, Australopithecus africanus, Australopithecus boci, Australopithecus robustus, which means it was a very strong one, Australopithecus gracile, a very gentle one, uh, this, that refers to body type, Australopithecus ethiopia. So you get the sense that there were a lot of different types competing at that time for who was going to move into where you are, or where we are today. About two and a half million years ago, uh, more sophisticated hominids broke away from the Australopithecines and developed into what's called Homo habilis, the tool user. That's a very important development. The hominid lines started being able to use tools, started being able to think, to take something and do something else with it that it was not done before. Other offshoots were around at that time, but they died out, and we really don't know why they died out. People speculate about climactic changes and so on and so forth, but we really don't know. Boscott man, a creature, he died out. His brain case was bigger than our brain case today. So it isn't about the size of the skull, and it may not be about the size of the brain. Okay? The, the general opinion today is it's more about the convolutions of the brain. Maybe, but there's also some indication that it's not only the convolutions of the brain, but also what the brain surface is composed of. Um, there are also a lot of others. Homo Rudolphus, who was there, died out and lots of others that we don't even know about yet, the bones haven't been unearthed. A good source for this is Richard Leakey's book, Origins, and uh, Johansson and Eddie's book, Lucy, The Beginnings of Human Evolution. Now, about, twelve, about two to two and a half million years ago, this homo, homo habilis, the tool maker, is roaming around, and he dominates the area for about a million years, roughly roughly a million years, until he either mutates into another form, or he dies out or transforms, we don't really know. But, a million and a half years ago, the only hominid type around was one called Homo erectus, the man who stood up. 
first time human beings or human types are standing up completely tall. And very importantly, he was the first hominid to travel out of Africa. Before this time, all the hominids are developing in Africa. They're not anywhere else. So that means the physical structure, the genetic structure, structure, all the basic structures of what you think of as a human being, all of these developed it within an African context. Uh, Homo uh, erectus uh, traveled out of Africa and he's found all over the world, uh, many places in the world, I should say. Uh, of course, 1,700,000 1, years ago in East Africa where uh, she rose. 700,000 years ago in China, her bones are found. 700,000 years ago in Algeria. 500,000 years ago in Narva, India. Remember, fire is first domesticated in Africa. Crops are first domesticated in Africa. But the oldest bones of our kind are clearly found in Africa and the highest numbers of them. So it's, it's pretty conclusive that this is the home of human beings. There's no polygenesis. Human beings didn't develop in all different kinds of places and move and moved, developed in one place and moved out. Okay. What about Homo sapiens sapiens? That's us, Homo sapiens sapiens, thinking man. Well, that, she first developed in Africa also. Uh, her bones have been found in different parts of the world. Parts of the world later, uh, Australia 50,000 years ago, Philippines 30,000 years ago, uh, Middle East 92,000 years ago, Siberia 30,000, China uh, 67,000, Europe 33,000, but her earliest remains were found in Africa. Now, at this time, say maybe 30,000, 50 to 30,000 years ago, human beings are scattered all over the planet. Okay, we've gotten to all the, uh, all the uh, places on the planet except Antarctica. We've even reached uh, the Americas by this time. Homo sapiens sapiens throughout the world at this time share certain characteristics. We're about four to five feet high, stand upright, use, use tools and fire, and very, very, very importantly, all are very dark-skinned or black. All. These are the ones in Europe, in Asia, in South America. All are black. And this is because of uh, a simple, uh, it's not so simple, but it is a well-established evolutionary uh, law. It's called Gloger's Law. And it states that all mammals reared in a, temp reared in a uh, near the equator, that is a hot and humid climate, must have dark skin for adaptation to the sun's ultraviolet rays. It is merely adaptational. So we have 50,000 years ago, all over the planet, one race, and that race is black. Thus, all stages of Homo sapiens sapiens in this room today arise in Africa. All human stock is Africoid in its origin. And this is the, the, uh, the result of uh, computer analysis. We have our mitochondrial DNA computer studies. And we also have now the cross-mapping of human gene pool. Uh, there's a new book out, over things over a thousand pages long with graphs and so forth. Meticulous analysis of the gene pools cross-fertilizing of all, of all the peoples of the earth. It's the history and geography of human genes uh, by Cal Valley, Sephora, Minoza, Piazza came out last year, Princeton University. It is definitive. It's quite clear. So we're all one species. This is the prototype. This is the template. And racial diversification is a relatively new phenomenon. Human beings have been around for at least 200,000 years in our present form, and maybe half a million. And only in the last 25 to 30,000 years has there been different types of human beings. I want you to please note something. Now, the Neanderthal man was not a Homo sapiens sapiens. He was a Homo sapien. He, had a, he was not a complete man from our point of view. He had a lobe missing in the brain, so certain information he could not process. But he survived from 300,000 years ago to about 50,000 years ago. And he died out. Why he died out? No one really knows. But he died out. Um, he traveled out of where or he was born. In, he may have generated in Africa. It's unknown. He may have generated in Europe. It's unknown. Uh, his bones are found everywhere. But one thing is interesting about him, or many things are interesting about him, is that he oftentimes buried his dead. And that indicates that he had some rudimentary 
religious or spiritual intuition. 